now we're in the grind room. It's every day. Pads are on. It's a real training camp now. It's not a grind, Dave. You're down there at 6 a.m. waiting for it to start, taking attendance, you know, making sure everybody arrives on time. So I don't want to hear about this grind stuff. It's, you know, it's one practice. It's over uh, around noon. <laughs> this ain't a grind. I'll tell you about a grind. 1988 was a grind. That was yeah. two practices a day for three hours. We didn't get out of there till midnight. It says, well, it's as big of a grind as the current collective bargaining agreement allows. <laughs> put it that that's, way. That's definitely true. Yeah. Uh, but it's fun. It's been it's been a fun first week. It has been a fun first week. The pads came on Tuesday. They were in full pads for the first time in training camp, which is a pretty significant day in the life of a training camp. Because before then, it's not that you're not gaining a lot of knowledge about the team, but I think you start to learn a lot more when guys can actually hit each other. I, I think you start to see some guys separate, even though that process is already underway. And we're going to talk about one of those positions in just a minute, the left tackle spot. We also want to mention uh, and kind of go through what the Eagles have a receiver with the Devontae Smith injury and how that has kind of played itself out on the field. Now what's left. Um, we'll talk about Jalen Hurts a little bit. We'll go through my practice observations from Tuesday's session. Uh, the one with pads. And we'll each pick a pleasant surprise, a player who has has done some nice things that maybe we didn't anticipate coming into camp. And we will talk about the Colts quarterback and um, the situation out there in Indianapolis, which, look, it has a direct effect on, on the Eagles and, and what they're going to get back in that trade. But uh, let's start with left tackle because it's kind of strange. Six days into what we thought was going to be this great competition – I'm about ready to call it. I mean, it's, I know that they're only in pads one day and we're only six days into this, but Jordan, my is just better. He's just better. And I think we both independently, I don't think we even talked about it, but we both independently wrote that uh, in our observations over the last couple of days. Um, you know, and you can see it not just in the reps, but just in the way they carry themselves. Uh, Jordan's just more confident. Um, he, he's, I think he's, I really feel like he's taken ownership of that battle um, where Dillard and I, I you know, I, I really bought into Dillard, you know, new man, grown up, new love for the game, new passion. So, to me, he's the same old Andre Dillard as, as far as what I can see. Um, and again, maybe, you know, these things tend to go in waves and maybe he'll, he'll bounce back and have a better second week, but um, the way I see it, it's not even close, Dave. Uh, you know, Jordan Mulata is just, he's the best left tackle in camp. And I think it's obvious to everybody. Yeah, I mean, over the first few days, he started to, there was a little bit of a gap and he's just making it bigger every day. Even Tuesday, the first day in pads, I was looking forward to seeing if Dillard could start to catch up. And to me, this was the first day I've really tried to not, go overboard because it's a it's a long training camp and they're going to give dillard every opportunity i mean he's a first round they pick he, and they should and he's really talented uh, physically so they're going to give him every opportunity they're not going to call it soon so i i've tried to be really patient with this and I, not what leap to conclusions especially before the before the joint practices before any games but man it's every day when you see it for six days in a row or six days of practice in a row it's the only thing you can think is like, man, the one guy's just much better than the other. And it's happening in 11 on 11 drills. And it's also happening in the one-on-ones. So after a while, I mean, call it like it is. I thought they were even on Sunday. I thought Sunday was a pretty even day for both of them. They were off, off Sunday, day. Dave. Yeah. It was a day off. I, I got it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so that was my one-liner for the day. But uh, yeah, it, it's uh, it's disappointing. Uh, I, I expected more. I really, I really, really believed Dillard was gonna come in, and uh, and you know, give this give this a fair, make this a fair fight, make it a good battle, make it a great competition. What a, what an opportunity, you know? To I mean, Mulata was a starter last year. Dillard was hurt all last year, but they're giving him this opportunity to you know to to take command of the job and his you know, job, by the way. Yeah. 
It was his job before it was Jordan's. His job two years ago. Um, his job last yeah. year. In I mean, yeah, well, yeah, until he got hurt. I mean, the whole idea was this was going to be Jason Peters heir apparent. I mean, I, that's why they drafted him. Um, yeah, it's, it's not happening. And I mean, we're, like you said, it's still early. You don't want to get too far ahead of yourself, but if, if things don't change, then the question is, what do you do with Andre Dillard? You know, do you, do you keep a backup left tackle uh, who can't do anything else just because he's a former first round pick? I, I just don't know the answer yet. And they have not been cross training these guys, at least from what I've seen, they've been, you know, one is the first team left tackle and the other one's a second team. And then they flip the next day. So it's not like I haven't seen any of them get reps on the right side. No, not at all. Um, and obviously Isaac Samalo hasn't practiced. Um, he's, he's got a hammy. He's out indefinitely, which is unfortunate because, um, you know, you want to see them both practice next to the guy that, that they would be playing with. Presumably Isaac will be back. Uh, I, I think Stout made the point of what great chemistry Dillard and Sam Malo had together and any advantage that Dillard would have from that is, isn't there. But then again, Malata doesn't seem to be bothered by any of that stuff. He doesn't seem to be affected by anything. Um, so, you know, and he talked, you know, he, he talked yesterday about how after OTAs, this is Malata, he talked yesterday about how he realized he was not in the best shape possible. He said, I, I, I talked myself into believing I was. I talked myself into believing I had a good routine. I talked myself into believing uh, I, was, I was fit, as fit as I could be. But he said, I lied to myself, and I realized that. And he spent the whole time between OTAs in the spring and training camp with the trainers and, and strength and conditioning guys. Really, you know, he lost some weight. He, he got on a diet. He started sleeping better. He started logging all his everything he ate when he slept and when he got up and all his training. And he realized there was a lot of room for improvement. And I think it shows. Uh, whereas Dillard kind of looks like the same old Dillard and he talked about the same kind of stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, I just, there's, there's something, there's a big difference between the two of them. And I don't know if it's want to, uh, cause it, like you said, Dillard's talented, he's got ability. Um, you know, he's there, there, there's something there. I mean, but uh, there's just something missing. There's something missing when you watch a Dillard rep and a Mulata rep. Mulata just goes out there and gets after it. And, and Dillard, uh, it's just not happening. Yeah. And it will be one thing. I, I think a lot of people have been focusing on Dillard in this competition because he hasn't played very well, but it's the only reason I'm, I'm it's not really like me to come out with these big, like I, I wouldn't normally declare a winner of a competition six days in the camp, but it's been two things. It's been Dillard struggling, but also Jordan Mylotta playing very well. So you have like both ends of the spectrum here. And and Tuesday was kind of a perfect example of that. It, it was Mylotta's day with the first team. I mean, from the first 11 on 11 period, first he pancaked Brandon Graham. On the very next play, he springs Boston Scott on a run down the sideline. And then in one-on-ones, he, yeah, he was really good. Meanwhile, Dillard in one-on-ones, he got beaten by Milton Williams across his face. I mean, that's you shouldn't be getting beat by a defensive tackle on a speed move. And then well, we saw... I mean, he, he is kind of a defensive end too, but yeah. He's more of a defensive tackle. Fair. He was drafted as a defensive tackle. Um, I'm not giving that excuse to no, I'm just Dillard saying there. I mean, he it's, shouldn't get, it's not like he shouldn't it's not get like beaten Hassan by Richard. a rookie defensive tackle who's learning defensive end who no it shouldn't happen I'm just saying speed. he does have some some you know they they are cross training him at they defense. are they are just, just um, an interest of fairness I'm not defending Dillard at all I mean but it's yeah. not like Hassan Ridgeway beat fair uh, but still he shouldn't be getting beat across your face on Total. a speed move Totally and then great. Josh Sweat blows him up for a, a sack in the team period. Dillard looked like he hurt his hand. He was on the sideline. He missed another round of reps after that. I mean, it's time. Like if It's time to do it if you're Andre Dillard. It's, it is. It's just he needs to start stacking some good days because that gap is widening every single day. It's every single day my lot is better. So after a while – I don't think the Eagles are going to call it, but in the back of their minds, they're going to know who their left tackle is. 
Yeah, and I wonder how long, like at what point they would I'll just say, look, this this is, you know, this is Jordan's job. Um, I would think maybe before the second preseason game, something like that. It might be later, but I think it would probably be later as long as Dillard's on the team. Yeah, you want yeah. <laughs> I think if they trade him, they'll probably declare <laughs> a lot of the winner. Um, but you know, you want to get Jordan as many reps as possible, also with 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 the ones. Uh, but you want, yeah, you want to exhaust every possibility with, with Dillard. Um, do you see a difference as far as just their body language? And it seems like when Dillard. I, I do, but I don't want to make too much of that because they have very different personalities. Like it can work. I mean, Dillard's just a, a more laid back guy. I don't, I don't want to equate it to him not caring. Cause I don't think that's the case. He's just a more like, Jordan Mailata is a jovial guy. He's more energetic. And, and Andre Dillard is, is kind of a calmer dude. He, he's not, he's more laid back. And I don't think that's necessarily a negative, but I, I think that when you're in a competition like this and we're looking for everything that shows up, but I don't know. Like, I just think Jordan's a better player. Does it bother you at all that the one time Andre Dillard kind of lit up during his interview yesterday, I guess it was on Monday, was when he was asked what books he's reading. Where, no, no. See, where, I don't. Where's Jordan? I, I know. I, I guess that, I'm, that's, I'm going. That's reading too much into it because I, get I, it. I think a lot of guys enjoy. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not biting on that because a lot okay. of guys enjoy talking about non-football stuff more than they enjoy talking about football when, when they're in those situations. So I look. It's none of that to me, honestly. I, I, I understand your point about the body language but it's hard for me to really know what I'm seeing. But that, Whereas, that plays into confidence to me. It does. It does. But you, but you don't know that Andre Dillard's cause we've never seen him like super. Confident. I don't think he was that way. Yeah. But I don't think he was that way in college when he was a first round pick. You know what I mean? I, so I, I think that's unfair. What I do think is fair is watching them on the field and seeing that one guy is just much better than the other. Well, that's clear. And the, the other stuff, I guess, really isn't isn't that relevant. I, it just it's striking to me just the difference in how they how they um, present themselves, how they react to a rep, how they um, how they speak. And, and um, I mean, Jordan Mulata is just brimming with confidence and life and energy and 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 passion. And I think there's I think there's value in that. I think there's something to that where, you know, Dillers just kind of seems a little mopey and. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. I, 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 sometimes you feel like it, he's beaten before he's even taken the rep. But I'm probably looking too deep into it. And you're right. Really, all that matters is what happens uh, on the field. And, and Jordan Mollad is dominating that side of it. He is. And the, the Eagles are going to have decisions to make. You're right. If, if Mollad wins this job, do they keep Dillard on the roster? Do they try to get a pick back for him? And then Jordan Mailata, by the way, entering a contract year. So if he wins this job, you'd think that they're going to try to lock him up at some point because you don't want your left tackle testing the market next year. Yeah, and then you end up trading for Andre Dillard (laughs) after the season. Jordan was asked about that uh, yesterday about the contract. He said, he said, dude, I'm just I'm just trying to get through like tonight's film study and tomorrow's practice. And my mind's nowhere you know, nowhere near on, on contract. And that's, that's the way it should be. By the way, that 2018 draft class looking pretty good. Yeah. I mean, it was only what five guys, but it was uh, Goddard, Avante, Josh Sweat, Mylotta, Matt Pryor. They're all still here. Yeah. Pryor, you know, who knows? I I don't see him here. I I think you had him on your projected roster. He'd go either way, but yeah, Goddard. No, I didn't. um, Oh, you didn't have him. No. Okay. Um, yeah, I, th- I think it'll be interesting to see how Avante plays in, in the slot in his more natural position. Um, Sweat, man, Sweat's interesting because like everybody in camp seems to think he's, and it's not a, not disparaging on Barnett, but it's it's almost like Sweat is everyone just kind of feels like he's on the brink of something really special. It does, and Barnett's actually had a pretty good camp, I think. Yeah, he actually has. But Sweat has has stood out. I agree with that for sure. Yeah, um, and you know, you talk to you, you talk to any of the offensive linemen who's impressed you, and they'll just Josh Sweat's the first guy they talk about. And Jordan talked a lot about his battles with Sweat, and 
and how much he enjoys going up against him because he's gotten so much better. And, and uh, yeah, uh, he's going to be That's been the fun thing about this left tackle battle is it kind of coincides with that defensive end battle because they're on the same side. So you have Sweat and, and Barnett going against Dillard and uh, Mylotta. So no matter who's with the ones or the twos in those competitions, right. it's still fun to watch and they're still gaining a lot out of it. That, that's a pretty good thing to have if you're the Eagles. Of course, it's a little different, the, the edge rusher competition, because whoever, I mean, they're both going to play a lot. Yeah. Uh, unlike, unlike left tackle, presumably, you know, if, if these guys stay healthy. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, to me, that's the big story of, of camp so far this first week has been, has been Jordan. I agree with that. And, and if that's one, this is one a, this is probably the bigger story, honestly, at least from a, a national level is Devonte Smith's injury, uh, sprained knee week to week. So he's going to miss probably two or three weeks here. His preseason now, obviously in jeopardy, uh, the Eagles don't seem overly concerned about it. And, and, the fact that Devontae has been walking around the field. He was on the jugs machine early this morning. I saw him chopping it up with, uh, with Jeff Lurie today on the field. So he, he's around. He doesn't look like he's not like limping around. He's not on crutches or anything. It's a knee sprain. Uh, still not ideal. Right. And, you know, you can do all the mental reps you want. And he's in meetings. He's in film study. Um, he's out on the field. Um, but it's a setback because he needs reps and as promising a player as he is. And I know he and Jalen have a little bit of history. They, they were teammates in 2018. Um, he, he needs this time. This is really valuable time for him. I mean, he's gotta be, he's gotta be a star this year and they really need him to be not just good, but exceptional. And, um, every day he misses is a little setback and I think he's a really smart guy. I think I think he picks things up quickly. Um, he should be back. You know, you would hope he'd be able to play in the last preseason game. The second one, um, I think, would be a stretch probably. Like even if he's ready, they probably wouldn't play him. But you know, you'd like to see him play in the third preseason game. And um, and then do you think kind they of, would? Do you think they'd they'd play him in that last one? Probably not. <laughs> actually, yeah. Um, but then there's so. that there's a longer gap than usual after the last preseason game. You have two weeks. Um, and I think, I think you'd like to see him back for that two weeks. That's when you start. Oh yeah. You know, That's when you're game planning. So you, you really want him back then. Yeah. At least, yeah. You're game planning for, for the Falcons. So, um, it's not a disastrous injury, uh, but you know, you saw last year with, with Jalen Rager, when he missed time, he never really made it up and you know, it's apples to oranges a little bit, but, um, same position, first round picks, young kids, um, it's, it's not ideal. It's not ideal for, for Devante. It's not ideal for Jalen Hurts. So um, the, the one good thing is that the younger receivers are getting more reps, uh, but it's, you know, it's, it's not a good situation, but not a disaster. Yeah. And I think you mentioned Rager. I, you mentioned his apples to oranges. I think that's true because Devante pretty mature, pretty good understanding of football. We know he's going to do the work to, to make sure that, he doesn't fall farther behind and he did play at Alabama. So I, sometimes I think that's a crush for a lot of guys saying they played at Alabama, but that matters. I mean, he's, he's played at a higher level, not the TCU's scrubs, but when you're playing Alabama, it's a little different. I think we'll see. I, I'm, I'm still pretty bullish on Devonte Smith this year. Yeah. And Rager's injury was later. Um, mm hmm his injury was like at the end of August and, and it was, so he had a bunch of time early, but it, it just kind of took him out of his rhythm. And then he missed five weeks with uh, what was it? The thumb ligament or finger ligament. And, yeah. and he, but he just never, it was a really fractured kind of, you know, season for him. So if Devante can come back and, um, and be healthy, I think get those two weeks in between uh, the Jets preseason game and, um, and, and the opener, that would be good. I, I, I wouldn't be shocked if he practices maybe in joint practices with the Jets and then maybe doesn't play in, a, in the game. I think something like that would have a lot of value for him. Yeah, and, and you're right. If, if the Eagles had to choose, would we rather see him in the game or joint practice? They'd probably pick the joint practice. It's more controlled. It wouldn't be tackled to the ground. So, um, yeah, that, that makes sense. You mentioned the, the young receivers and, and how much they've been playing. Let's kind of go through them. Because you're right. I mean, it, there, there are some other guys who have looked good. 
But first, let's start with Jalen Rager because it's a, a really interesting situation with him. It feels like one thing after another with this kid. Yeah. Um, the latest, and it was uh, the inquiry's Jeff McClain who first reported it, that Rager failed his conditioning test that came on the heels of uh, him losing a childhood friend uh, to a murder. Um, so just, you know, you, you really feel for him. You can understand why it takes him out of his mental space. But now here he is in year two is supposed to be this this big jump for him and he's starting off training camp behind kind of go, oh man here we go is that what you were thinking when you first heard it yeah there's no doubt it's just here we go again um you know i i, I you wrote a story about about how nick handled the whole thing i think he handled it really well um instead of i mean there was discipline involved and he wasn't mm-hmm. at practice he did some individual the first i think it was first three days yeah. I think Saturday was his first day doing team, um, but they were supportive of him and they, they provided whatever resources he needed to, I mean, that's a, that's a really heavy deal there. You'll lose a childhood friend, um, especially that way. God, um, you know, we talked to Jalen, but I, I thought Nick handled it well. Um, we talked to Jalen and Jalen's not very, he, he's never, he's not a real chatty guy, um, especially with us. Um, and he didn't say a lot today after practice, but I, I thought he said, I, I liked what he said, you know, and he, he, he said, I, I'm, I'm glad they were accountable with me. You need to be accountable with everybody. That's, that's how you become a team. And he, he said all the right things, which he hasn't always done. I, I think, um, you know, he, he, he put it on himself and, and, you know, he said that, that the guy who was killed was like a little brother to him and, you know, he talked about how he missed the funeral because he wanted to be at practice on, on Saturday. Um, and I thought he actually had a good day today. Uh, he did, actually. And and he's uh, he's back working with the first team. On, on Saturday, when he got those first team reps, he didn't work with the first team at all. He was exclusively the with the two team reps. Yeah. You can't say when he got the first team reps. Oh, yes, you're right. I'm sorry. His initial team reps, he was not with the first team. Right. Uh, he has been mixing in with the with the ones the last couple of days, and he's had moments for sure. He beat Darius Slay in a one on one drill today. It was a nice move and he yeah. got open. And we've seen them use him around the line of scrimmage a lot, which is where I think his strength in his offense can be is. And that's a lot of what Nick Sirianni wants. But uh, Jalen Rager has those skills to be able to, to catch the ball and and the Eagles had the horses to get out in front of him and block too. So uh, some bubble screens, some, some crossers, that kind of thing, they can get Jalen Rager involved and it, it looks like they have a plan for him, which is good. Yeah. And I thought he showed some maturity and some growth in the way he handled all this. I really did. Um, and, and that's encouraging. Um, but again, this is a 22 year old kid. I mean, he was 21 when he played as a rookie. Um what were you doing when you're 21? You know, it's like that, that whole thing. But um, I mean, they need him, man. You know, they, they, they need Jalen Rager to, uh, to be a factor. And I think having Devante take some pressure off him, uh, eventually they'll have him and he doesn't have to be the guy, but they still need him to be a guy. And um, I, I think it's, it's good to see him back practicing. It's good to see him accountable and it's good to see him, um, you know, not blaming other people or, you know, anything like that. He just, you know, kind of put this behind him. He, you know, he looks like he's moving well, I think. And, and he had a good day today. So um, hopefully he can build on that. Yeah, you're right. It's all about building for him and, and trying to catch up. But I mean, the, the positive is that he's in condition now and he's, he's back on the field. One of the guys who's been really good so far, and, and both of us almost expected this from him, based on the glimpses we saw from the last year is Quez Watkins. Yeah. All of a sudden he's looking like he might be able to help this team. Yeah. I mean, he's, if you had to ask me who's had the best week out of all the wide receivers, I'd probably say Quez, you know, yeah. he's, he's caught everything. Um, he just looks, you know, it's funny how you're, when you know more what you're doing and you feel more confident, comfortable, you just look bigger, you know, you just look bigger and more. And I, I think he might've got a little stronger too, but um, man, he looks great. And yeah, we, I mean, we both bullish on him coming in. Uh, I, I, I just like the way he looks and um, it's going to be interesting to see what his role is. And they, they've got a lot of, 
a lot of guys they don't really know about at wide receiver. Um, if I'm, you know, if I'm Nick Sirianni, I'm feeling pretty good about where Quez Watkins is. And, you know, I mean, Jalen seems to really like throwing to him. Jalen likes throwing the ball deep. I mean, he really he's likes deep ball. He, he does. I think sometimes he likes doing it too much. Um, you know, I think sometimes he, he waits a little long looking for the deep ball, at least in practice um, before he, I mean, the guy led the NFL in yards per uh, completion last year. He led the NFL he, and that was with, you know, God knows who that he was thrown to. So, well, Deshaun Jackson was one of them. His one <laughs> catch. So that certainly helps an 81 yard or whatever it was, but um, yeah, he and Quez seem to have some good chemistry and um, you know, there's no hesitation. He runs good routes. Uh, I've been really impressed with him. Well, that's the thing with Quez when, when they drafted him in the sixth round and he saw the four, three, five, you thought, Oh, they're drafting a straight line speed guy. They've done that before. There've been a lot of straight line speed guys come through here. that couldn't play. Yeah. Uh, but, but Quez has more, I mean, there's something there and, and you're right. He's been, the routes have been precise. He has good hands, at least from what we've seen in this training camp. I, I, you're right. I've, I've been most impressed with him, but the other guys have had moments too. Uh, I think Travis Fulgham has had his moments. He had uh, a big catch today in one-on-ones, but he, he's also, um, he's come really close to making some spectacular yeah. catches that he has not made. Yeah. And, and if he makes a couple of those, I think, we're talking about how great a week it's been for Travis Fold. Yeah. I was just talking to somebody about that. I, I don't think any of them were drops. Mm -hmm. All of them. There's been about five of them. That would have been incredible. Been a lot, yeah. It would have been incredible plays. There was one in the back of the end zone. It might've been on Thursday. It was early on where, um, you know, the ball got batted in the air. Did you see that rep? And, yeah. and then he, he like dove for it and like tried to one hand it and the ball just kind of came out. But um I like the fact that he's going for those. Um, and, you know, I, it's, I don't know. I don't really know what to expect from him, but I think he looks good. Um, he looks a lot better as far as just, you know, confidence than that stretch last year after, you know, after those five games, he's just kind of fell off the face of the earth. So he, I, I like the consistency there. He's catching the balls that he should be catching and almost catching the balls that he shouldn't. Yeah. And, and so, I mean, you're right. There have been more than a couple. You'd like to see him haul one of those in. Uh, it would help his cause out a lot. But uh, he, I think he's been solid, not great. Uh, hasn't made mistakes. Uh, John Hightower, an interesting one, because he's had his moments too. I mean, he's made some real, he made some really good plays on Tuesday. Uh, I think with him, the problem has been consistency. You know, he'll have, he'll have a really good play. And then uh, he'll make a mistake. And we saw Nick Sirianni a couple of days ago kind of get on him quite a bit. It consistency. He got on him, but then he finished by, like, you know, it being really supportive. It was interesting. Mm -hmm. You know, he got on and got, got on him, got on him. And then, you know, at the end of the exchange, you know, he just was, like, building him back up and telling him how good he could be. Yeah. Because yeah. Hightower does have some talent. He does. He does. I mean, he had – back-to-back 50-yard -back catches last year, so there's something there. Um, I don't think he's got a roster spot locked up. They have him out right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, he, I mean, I thought he had a lot of work to do. I think he looks better than last year. But, yeah, you're right. Consistency yeah. is, is the issue. And um, I don't know if his – uh, I don't think his route running is like compared to Quez. I mean, they're the two kind of late round guys from last year. Um, I don't think his route running is as good. I don't think he's, well, he's not as consistent clearly. I don't, th I think his sure. route running is pretty good. I, I, he just, he doesn't seem to, he doesn't seem super instinctive, I guess. Okay. Yeah. And I think that might just be not quite grasping the offense as much as some of the other younger guys. That's possible. He, there's ability there. Yeah. Uh, I don't think we need to talk about Greg Ward. He's just Mr. Consistency. You kind of know what you're going to get from him. Uh, Jay Jaw, as much as people roll their eyes every time, he's had an all right camp. He hasn't had as good a camp as he did last year, at least not early. Last year, he was very good in training camp, and we yeah, all got was. fooled. So even if he has a great camp this year, if he really turns it on, I still think expectations are going to be quite tempered. Yeah. Um, he hasn't had any spectacular plays, at least none that I remember, but um, he's catching the ball okay when, yeah. when he needs to. They're putting him in the slot quite a bit, which 
you know, I, <laughs> it's funny because I, I forget who I was telling this to, but for the last couple of years, and it's nothing against Greg Ward, I felt like I, every time we talk about the slot position, I'm like, man, they need the, they need more explosiveness from that slot. And then we show up <laughs> this year and our Sega white sides in there. Well, that's not exactly what I was thinking. Uh, I don't know. He, he's a big bodied slot. It can work. I just, to me, that's not playing to his strengths. And I, look, I understand that his strength is at this point is kind of like a, a pipe dream for him to ever be a second round pick who can go up and catch 50, 50 balls, but that's why they drafted him. And if you can't get that out of him, I don't want him, honestly. Yeah, um, that's true. I think maybe they just, I mean, there's really not a spot for him outside. Like, yeah. so do you want him taking up reps or, or try to make it work inside? Um, yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't see him. I think he'll be in the league. I, I just don't think it'll be here. Okay. Uh, anyone else we need to hit on there? Um, Jamon Osmond, the rookie. He, he does some good things. Uh, yeah know, he you know he's for a bit he's another big kind of slot guy they play him in the slot a lot that's what he did in college he's not going to make spectacular plays like that's not his game but he's pretty solid he hasn't made mistakes he doesn't look as slow as that 471 he ran at his pro day no he doesn't yeah um i don't know if he was hurt or, or what for that but um he's got a ton of reps. that one on the sundial <laughs> i mean he's got a ton of reps because you know, Quez missed a couple of days. Obviously, Devontae's missed time. Um, I think Greg Ward was was out a couple of days. Um, uh, who else? But, you know, Osborne's been there um, uh, you know, every day, and he's got a lot of reps. You know, practice squad type type of guy. Yeah, maybe you can stick around there. Andre Patton, uh, new guy they brought in, had played with Sirianni before. He's actually getting some run. They're, they're obviously rotating a lot, especially deep into practices, and – He's actually gotten a few snaps here and there at the, the first team. I thought he had a couple of good catches today. Yeah, I did too. Score big with the AAA Eagles MVP membership, along with the superb roadside assistance and discounts you've come to expect from AAA. Get exclusive Eagles-related perks. For all the details, visit AAA.com slash Eagles. As I do every day, Rube, uh, practice observations on the days of the podcast, be sure to read those on the site but today let's just go through uh we, we've hit on a few of these but i really want to talk about zach mcpherson the rookie fourth round pick out of texas tech what a day he had on tuesday three or four pass breakups uh, and the thing i love about him is after practice he's looking at a couple of those as negatives because he didn't pick the ball off uh, there's something there with this kid yeah, actually, it was funny because you asked him the question I was about to ask him, which was, I don't know, do you do you look at at dropped interceptions as a positive because you're breaking up a pass or a negative because you feel like you should make the catch? And he said, oh, it's a negative. I, the, two of those would have been touchdowns. So that's 12 points right there. <laughs> I mean, just practice. They're not keeping score. But I like that mentality. Well, with Nick, they might be keeping score, actually. It could be. It could yeah. be. Um, he's really around the ball. Um, he's for, sticky in coverage. He's around the ball. He, he's, he's aggressive. There, there's a lot to like about him. And he's solid. I mean, he looked, you know, he's, he's a good looking guy as far as, you know, strong and, and big and, and he can run. Um, I think, you know, you've, and he's not, he's not a super high pick. What was he a four? Four. Um, number 123. He was a four. And so he was 123, four. And, he for a guy like that he's he's very comfortable he's he he doesn't i mean he really plays like he belongs here um which you don't see from a lot of young cornerbacks period much less a guy who wasn't a top prospect um he, he's got a little swagger to him he's got a lot of confidence and he's got a nose for the football and he's earning himself some playing time he is. And the funny thing about him in the pre-draft process is that opinions were so split on him. Some draft and, and people I trust too, you know, I mean, some people had him as like a late round pick Daniel Jeremiah, who I probably trust as much as anyone had him as his number 85th best prospect Remember that. in the entire draft. So like he, you know, you're trying to, to scrounge up any information on this kid when, when the Eagles draft him and I'd heard of him, but I didn't know a ton about him. But it, it was really strange to see how split people were on him. The Eagles went to the Hula Bowl, 
which is not look. I, there's there's some good players at the Hula Bowl, but it's not exact. It's not like you're going to the Senior Bowl. You're not, or even the Shrine Game. I mean, you're kind of picking through some lesser known prospects. But he had a great week out there with Rex Ryan, who I talked to. He really likes him. Um, the Eagles. That, that's where they really started to to like him a lot too. Was at the Hula Bowl. But yeah, there, there's something about him. He's and he's aggressive too. You know, I think there are some rookies who are a little timid. He's aggressive. And, and there were a few plays on those pass breakups where, yeah, he's close to a penalty. And, yeah. and that's something he's got to watch. But um, they he have was refs funny. out there. I mean, he was funny because, yeah, there were refs out there. And he was asked about that. And he said, there's no flag. So it was not a penalty. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's he's a phys- he is a physical player. And, you know, he'll, he'll get called for those, I, I guess, here and there. But. Um, you love the mentality, you love the, the approach and, and more than anything, just how he, as a young guy, um, just seems to fit. He just seems comfortable. Um, his body language is really good. Um, you know, if you were watching practice and didn't know who was who, you would not have him earmarked as a rookie. He doesn't, he doesn't practice like a rookie. Yeah, no, that's, that's definitely fair. Uh, I would like um, – maybe I'll ask Nick Sirianni to throw a double move his way because I want to see – because he has been so aggressive if, if they can catch him on one. But, uh, there's, yeah, he's he's been really fun to watch. And the nice thing is that they might need him this year, but that's not their plan right now. You know, they have they, – they signed Steven Nelson, which means they can bring him on a little slower, which I think will help his development. Yeah. Yeah, fun guy to keep your eye on. Um, O-line, D-line drill say the one-on-ones, which is always my favorite thing to watch during any practice. Um, my lotta, like we mentioned earlier, had some good reps and Dillard, not so great. Well, he had one good rep against Barnett and then he got undressed a little bit by Milton Williams, but, um, Coyote Awasika, and I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly. Rookie guard from Buffalo. Keep an eye on him. He he's a dark horse candidate right now to make this team. No one's talking about him, but the Eagles paid him a lot of money, a lot of guaranteed money, and he's been really solid. Today, he threw Brandon Graham. And it was an inside rush from Graham, which obviously he's, he's better on the edge, but Brandon Graham doesn't get tossed. He got tossed, and then typical BG, he gets back up, and he's like, we're running it again. And then uh, the rookie held his own again. I thought as the second he threw Brandon Graham and Graham got back up and went right back to the line, I thought, uh-oh this rookie's about to get thrown back into the Novacare complex building, but he held his own again. And I'd keep an eye on him. He feels like a, like a, and there've been a ton of these guys, the Sua Opedos, Luke Jeriga stout gets these guys who are undrafted and, and turns them into decent players. And Luke Jeriga, by the way, has looked really good. Um, and, and I think this is the next guy on that list. Yeah, it was funny. Uh, Dave and I were on different fields. I was over on the watching, um, watching, uh, one-on-one drills and you were watching well one-on-one receivers and corners you were watching the the lineman and Dave like comes running over to me all excited because uh, Coyote uh, I was seeking had a good rep against BD he's like running over he's like woo, woo. <laughs> oh man that says a lot about me and none of it's good um, and Javon Hargrave in those drills has been very good and that's especially important because look and we'll right now they're without their two starting guards so he's not going against Brooks or Sam Alu but He's going to see a lot of one-on-ones this year. He's got to beat guys in one-on-ones because Fletch is going to get doubled. Every once in a while, they'll let Fletch take one of those, and he just <laughs> he just pummels whoever. Uh, he had Nate Herbig the other day, and poor Nate Herbig's, you know, he's he's fine. He's a fine player, but it's just unfair sometimes watching Fletch against these guys. I won't talk about when Reggie White went up against undrafted rookies. <laughs> yeah, it's like why why even do it? You know what's funny? So these one on one drills, and this is a this is this is I guess there's a little bit of a, a when I or a story, but nice. um, yeah, I'm I'm learning from the best here. <laughs> uh, but when the Eagles signed Brandon Brooks, that was the first thing I thought about because when I covered him in Houston, no one else on this, even when he was like a rookie. And he wasn't very good yet, honestly. He, he was kind of a slow learner in terms of the NFL world. But he was the only one strong enough to battle J.J. Watt. And at that point, J.J. Watt was the best player in the world. I mean, he was defensive player of the year, probably the highest level I've ever seen a defensive player play. Um, and he was the only one who could match him every day. So 
I, that's the first thing I thought of with Brandon when, when the Eagles signed him. I was like, you know, this guy has all pro pro bowl type potential. And turns out he did, but so you can learn a lot from, from these drills. Oh, no doubt. Nowhere to hide. Yep, exactly. Uh, anything else? Oh, Jalen hurts today. Um, in general, I think he's been building. He's been, I, I thought he started off a little rough and I, I think pretty much every day he's gotten a little bit better. Uh, it was really strange early on in practice today. I was watching the quarterbacks throw to running backs and man, he was off. He was, yeah. he was wild, like a uh, sailing ball, storm in the dirt. And I'm thinking it's it, it was, it was like the first period of practice. So I'm like, this might be a rough day for Jalen hurts, but I give him credit because it wasn't a rough day for him. I thought he ended up having a pretty decent day, even on those short throws, those intermediate throws where he was really struggling in the early period, he settled down. So uh, I give him credit because sometimes a young player will start off a practice bad and not be able to recover. Yeah. I thought he was terrible in that stuff. And then uh, once they got into team, he was, I was really good. Um, I thought it was as good as he's thrown the ball so far um, for the most part. Um, yeah. And they finished practice. I don't know if they finished practice, but near the end of practice did um, some two minute drills, actually 90 second drill. I think they had 90 seconds on the clock. Um, and, you know, he did some good things. That's where, you know, his, his feet can help him, but um, that's always a fun drill. I love watching the, yeah. the hurry up. Miles um, dropped one, a bad drop. Yeah, he did. And that one, it didn't make my observations. I just thought of it now. Um, but that's a drop you can't make. Yeah. Although yeah. I did mention to someone as I walked by, at least it stopped the clock. <laughs> it was a pass in the middle of the field in a hurry up and he dropped it. But yeah, yeah. Miles has still got to work on his hands. He's been putting in the work. It's just yeah. hasn't. Yeah. What are your overall impressions of Hurts so far? Pretty good. Yeah, pretty yeah. good. And I think there's a couple of things that, like I, th I think sometimes he he wants to hit the home run so bad. I think he's I think he's got to be a little quicker to check down. Um, if he's going through his progression from deep to middle to to short, he's he's got to he's got to get rid of the ball because uh, those those will be sacks. Um, I admire the fact that he he wants to make big plays, um, but you know you got some good running backs who can catch the ball, tight ends. Nothing wrong with um, nothing wrong with getting six yards and having second yeah. and four. So. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm impressed. Um, I think he's been a little better than I anticipated. Um, he's not going to hit every throw. Um, nobody does except maybe Brady. Now we saw him go 31 for 31 against Curtis Marsh in joint practices once <laughs> he went after him like 31 straight reps or something like that. But, um, yeah. And, and he's really got a command of the team. And I think that's one thing you know, you hear about, but unless you're a practice and, and day after day after day and watching him and watching him interact, um, there was a play where um, one of the running backs had a long run and he ran over from another field to like, you know, high five him and, you know, and that's just him being himself. That's just natural. He, he's not trying to be anything or do anything or make a point. He's just, he was excited. He was fired up. Um, I'm, I'm pressed. I, yeah, I'm, I have been too. And it's so strange, though, to watch a player like this in these practices because he's a thrower. They're not showing a lot of, of design runs for him, which I think will be a pretty big part of this. But they better be a big part of this offense because that's what makes him a special player. But you're not seeing that right now. So um, the, the one thing we are seeing is, is like some of the misdirection stuff yeah. is predicated on his legs being there. You know, not necessarily him running the ball, but the threat of him running the ball. So you're, st they're still early in opening this playbook, and they're they haven't shown everything yet. But we're starting to see, I think, uh, how it has been catered to him a little bit. Yeah, I would agree. I've always I've always said that Donovan McNabb was at his best, at his most dangerous when um, he would take off running, draw the defense up, but before he went over the line of scrimmage, he would. There's going to be open guys when you do that. Like if you're a defensive player, whether it's Michael Vick or Randall or Donovan, you know, rolling out and tucking it in and start running, but you're not over the line of scrimmage, defense comes up. That means there's open guys down the field. And, you know, you just, it's an easy throw. It's an easy game. Um, and if they don't come up, then you run it. And Donovan really had that mastered by like 2003, 2004. Um, he didn't want to run. He, he wanted to, 
uh, you know, the threat of the run was, was, was a real weapon. And I think it can be for Jalen. Yeah. We've already seen some, some read option in there. We've seen some RPO looks. So um, it's fun to think about the possibilities of him in this offense. Of course, it all, what really comes down to is can he be good enough as a thrower? And, and we won't know that until he starts playing, but the rest of it is intriguing for sure. Yeah, no doubt about it. Um, hey, it's been a year full of uncertainty, but one thing is certain, Independence Blue Cross can help you make the healthcare decisions that are right for you. Choose coverage you can count on with the region's strongest network, Independence Blue Cross. Learn more at ibx.com. All right, Rube, give me a pleasant surprise of camp so far. I think you're having a good camp, Dave. I, I really do. I think you've come out. That's not a pleasant surprise. I feel like I'm the consistent <laughs> veteran at this point. All right. I'll give you Jason Huntley. I mean, this kid is making an explosive play every day. Um, turns the corner. He's fast, man. He's, what does he run for? I think he ran it. He didn't get invited to the combine. He ran about a 4-3-4, four, four, I think, at his pro day. Um, New Mexico State, I believe. Yeah. Pro day. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we were talking to him yesterday. The Aztecs? Are they the Aztecs? I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Uh, but one of the writers said, you know, um, Jason, I didn't get to watch a whole lot of New Mexico State games, but, and he goes, nobody did. Uh, but uh, Dave's, Dave's looking it up. If, are they the Aztecs? What do you got? I, I can, I can no. tell you. They're not. No. Is that New Mexico? New Mexico Highlands? Hold on. I got to look it up. Sorry. Keep, keep Eagles up. had a receiver from New Mexico Highlands once, which is in um, Las Vegas, New Mexico. And he said, okay. be, he they're said the Aggies. Be, they're the Aggies. And apparently, these tourists would show up in Las Vegas, New Mexico, looking for the casinos. San Diego State or the Aztecs. I should. Yeah, have right, that. right. Uh, Dave totally missed my story about New Mexico Highlands, but that's okay. <laughs> um, but Jason Holly, yeah. Um, he was on the team last year, barely played. He had maybe five or six carries, um, barely played on special teams. He had like 15 reps, but he was on the team. And there was something that they liked about him. And you could see now, I mean, he's, um, he's explosive. I mean, he turns the corner yeah. uh, in a hurry. And, and once he gets ahead of steam, he's, he's hard to, hard to catch. He's catching the ball. Well, um, I, I don't know where he fits in. It's a crowded running back roster he said he's not worried about that he's just trying to make plays and he's been doing that pretty consistently yeah fifth round pick last year uh lions. came over from the lions lions caught him the eagles claimed him there's something there he's a kick returner which is imagine you know, if fulgham and huntley both become like <laughs> i mean that's like the last the lions well i guess fulgham was drafted two years ago right yeah it was a six round pick right yeah yeah uh Huntley is a kick returner. That's not a huge play in the NFL anymore, but you still need someone back there and his speed threat will help you early in camp. I thought carry on Johnson was probably in the running or the, the top dog in that, in that running back battle for the fourth spot, but I'm starting to think maybe Huntley, I'm starting to think maybe even five running backs isn't out of the question. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, I don't think carry Johnson's looked bad. He had, he had a nice, he had a pretty nice run today um, in team. Um, he hasn't really flashed a whole lot. He's um, he's looked bouncier than I expected he, for a guy. He does look healthy. Trouble. He looks healthy and quick. He's just I guess he just hasn't had a ton of opportunities. Um, Gamewell, I think Gamewell's been been pretty good. Um, he's come I, on. I think he had a slow start, but he, he's looking more comfortable. I would agree with that. Um, I thought he had a good day today. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Boston Scott's gotten up. I almost said something load that I can't say, but um, he's got a load of reps. They really like him. They really like Boston Scott. And, and him and Jalen have looked pretty smooth together. Yeah. You know, Jalen's hit him in stride quite a bit out of the backfield. Yeah, he has. He's been targeted a ton. I bet he's been targeted more than anybody. More than anybody on the yeah, team. Probably. Yeah. yeah, it's not a crazy thought. Um, interesting group of uh, running backs. They can all catch, catch the ball. Um, other than Jordan Howard, he's not really a receiver, but uh, it's it's fun competition. Yeah. Uh, how about my surprise player, Tyree Jackson? Yeah. Who you know, there it was. He, he was fun to talk about in the spring, just because he's so big. He's six seven, and he stands out because of that. 
but he's making some plays for a guy who didn't convert to tight end until January to be out here. All of a sudden you're thinking like, well, I, they probably won't keep him on the roster because it well, we'll see what happens with Zach Ertz. But if, but if, if Zach Ertz is gone or, or if something else changes, I'd probably try to get Tyree Jackson on the roster. I don't know. He might be making too much noise. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a good point. And I think a couple of things about Tyree Jackson, the, the one thing that's been really impressive to me, I mean, he's caught the ball well, but I mean, he's really physical. Like mm-hmm. you don't expect a converted quarterback. Like it's not shocking if he's catching the ball well, but like he'll tuck it in and run over people. I mean, he's a physical player. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it sounds like his blocking has been fine for, for what they've done so far. Um, but Nick Mullins was talking about him. I guess they're locker mates. And he said, he just started playing tight end in January. He told me he started playing in January. I can't believe that. Like he looks like, and, and I think Nick talked about him this morning and just said how he, they ran the same rep a few days ago and he had a coaching point about it. Um, and then they ran it yesterday and he, you know, and, you know, just had to do with the way he, he got open and, and, uh, and made his cut and he said, you could tell the difference after about three days. That's big showing that kind of improvement. He's been, um, I'm, I'm shocked how well he's playing. I'm, sh- I'm, I'm, I'm shocked. I would, I would say if Ertz isn't here, I, I think he's probably an odds on favorite to be on the 53. Yeah. And you think the, the guy who we, I really wanted to see at tight end was Jack Stoll, who's had a pretty quiet camp. Uh, he, he was the, the rookie they paid a lot of money to, and you thought he's going to have an opportunity. But all of a sudden Tyree Jackson, Coming on pretty strong. He might have stole his uh, roster spot. Maybe, yeah, very possible. That's my. Anyone else that you want to n- mention before we wrap? Dave either didn't up? get my joke or is ignoring it. Probably ignoring it. I didn't get it. I'm sorry. What was stole it? Stole his his roster spot. Oh, uh, yeah, I got it. Anybody else? No, I mean, I think those are the two as far as kind of the. Yeah. Anyone the on unknown. defense? I'll give you oh. Davion Taylor. I know he got hurt again. He's dealing with a quad injury. Yeah, but the fact that he's been out there and looking like a real linebacker is a big deal. I mean, that could end up being one of the bigger developments of training camp as long as he he's, ends up being healthy out of it. But if they can get something out of him, he, he's a physical freak. It was just the mental side of it. He was behind on, but he's looked pretty good and he's getting a lot of first team reps. Um, defensively, Teron Jackson is a guy who. I agree with that one too. And he's someone I didn't really know a lot about. He played at Coastal Carolina. I, haven't, I didn't watch him. So, um, getting a, I know you're going to make fun of me. You know, as far as he didn't have Coastal Carolina on him. Uh, but he, he's got good bend around the edge. Yeah. It's, he, it's fun to watch. He can get, he's not the biggest guy, but he uses that, that smaller stature to his advantage. A lot, honestly, a little bit like Derek Barnett with that bend, how he can kind of get under bigger tackles. We've seen some of that from Tron Jackson, some fun. Yeah, he's only like 6'2", 255-ish. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, probably earmarked for the practice squad as well. But uh, I don't know. You know, yeah, who knows? Uh, you never know. But um, open some eyes. Certainly a guy you take notice of. Yeah. All right. We got to uh, finish this up talking about the Colts quarterback. Tough news. Um, having surgery, uh, or he had it already, on his foot. Out five to 12 weeks, which is a really big gap. <laughs> it's a big difference. I mean, a five-week injury, he could be back for the opener. A 12-week injury, he could miss two months of the season. So, Well, he's, he's a quick healer. I mean, he had that sore back and only missed, you know, 10 months with that. Sorry. <laughs> Couldn't help it. Um, yeah, it, it's weird because, they, you know, at first they announced that he was going to skip the surgery and, and get rehab. And, and it was like one day later. Yeah. Which honestly been... is, I mean, normally when you hear that, it's not a good idea. There are no. some cases where it works, but if you're putting off the surgery, the surgery is going to happen it, for the most part. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. And it would have impeded his ability to play. Um, I don't think the first round pick is a lost cause, but I would say it's, you know, it's unlikely at this point. Um, yeah. I mean, it's less likely he, so I did the math, and and he can miss a few games and still, yeah, he still can miss do four this. games. I mean, he can miss four games. Opening day is almost six weeks away. Five, you know. So, 
even if he's out nine weeks, they still have a chance. I mean, anything more than that, then you're not getting a one. Um, and that's assuming he doesn't get benched or anything. Yeah, and, and for those who don't again. know the no know the the stipulations on the conditional pick, he has to either play seventy five percent of the coast offensive snaps, or he has to play seventy percent and then make the playoffs. Yeah, and you know, on the other side of the, I mean, and I again, I like Carson. I'm not an anti Carson guy. I I always got along with him. Um, I and I was really high on him up until about the middle of last year. I was just you know, but he's always hurt. And that's, you know, I mean, it's just been one thing after another since college. And well, I, well this one, this is the crazy part about this injury is apparently it dates back to high school. Yeah. So this was like a ticking time bomb in his foot that I don't know if, if the Eagles knew about it or not. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, and somebody asked if, if the, if the Colts could, you know, have any recourse with the trade, but I mean, they passed him through their physical. Yeah. Physical. Yeah. And once that happens, the Eagles are off the hook. Um, so if, if he does come back from this, what are the odds that he stays healthy the rest of the year? I mean, he's, he hasn't done that. Well, he, I mean, he has though. I mean, he, he well, played 16, 16 and, and 19. Yeah. Well, I heard in the playoffs, but yeah. They got he hurt. Played, in the that doesn't matter for the Eagles' purposes. They no, that's to... true. That's true. Um, I just, I don't have a lot of faith in his ability to stay healthy. I, I guess that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, he's. I, I will never root against him. I don't root against anybody. I don't root for anyone to get hurt. I just don't have a lot of faith in him being able to stay healthy. And even if he does come back, um, to get that 75, you know, we'll see. Um, I mean, the last thing about about the Colts quarterback situation is there's a guy in Chicago that Frank Reich is very familiar with um, who doesn't really fit into the bears picture. What's your thoughts on Nick Foles to, to the, to the Colts and what would that do to the. Yeah. I mean, current quarterback? Were, the, were the Colts not paying attention when I, he can't do that. Right. I, I can't imagine. I can't imagine. Yeah. Um, but they need a quarterback. I get that, but go find another one. I, I, you can't do that. What if you, you bring Foles in, and then when the other guy's healthy, you just cut Foles, so there's no <laughs> – it goes like nine and one. <laughs> yeah, and the funny thing is, it's not like those two guys hate each other. They're, they're no. You know, but – No, I mean, it seems like they get along. Yeah, but, but I mean, you can't – Untenable. Do, yeah, you can't do that. And see, Quentin Nelson has yeah. basically the same injury. Is that weird? I mean, what the heck is going on? Did and Carson bring whatever home. weird curse has been over this organization out there? Apparently not, because Devontae Smith's hurt here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know, it's not it's not that serious. But yeah, it's uh it's weird. It's the exact same injury. Yeah, um, very strange. It might be Carson's fault also. Maybe he stepped on him. That's three, by the way, for you. I oh my god, it. did I say it? Yeah, you said it three times. Oh uh we got anything else before we wrap this up? Well, that's like What's, that's like a dollar fifty into the jar. That's a lot. Yeah. That's a, it's an expensive week for me. No, just one, one, one other thing. Um, I've been really impressed with Nick. Um, mm, yeah, I, I like watching him at practice. He's, uh, and I think we touched on this talking about um, Hightower. I mean, he's he's very hands on. Um, he's extremely supportive, but also critical. Um, he drives guys hard. He works them hard. Um, the practices are very crisp and and efficient. They're fun to watch high energy, uh, not surprisingly. Um, but it's not like guys are skating. I mean, if, if somebody messes up they're they're accountable, they get yelled at. Um, and, and, uh, I've been impressed. They, they, they're clearly, they were clearly extremely prepared for training camp as a coaching staff. Yeah. They've been fun to watch too. Um, just because the, we've heard about their energy, but we're seeing it. It's not just Nick either. It's Gannon. It's Michael Clay. It's a lot of these Cannon's guys. Nuts. <laughs> Cannon, Cannon is nuts. Uh, yeah, he's been fun to watch. And Sirianni, like, he's a player's coach. The, he, he's wearing T-shirts with Jake Elliott and Brandon Graham, and the guys like him. So you, you always want to make sure that there's a good balance between buddy-buddy but also hard-nosed, accountable. And I, I think he's done a good job of that because he'll get after him. He, re he really will. He's not trying to be best friends all the time, and I, I think that's important. He loves ball. 
<laughs> he loves ball. You guys love ball. Last thing, um, just uh, off off the topic a little bit. I got to give props to um, Trent, New Jersey's Athing Mo, who uh, this morning, I guess it was, I guess it was last night. No, it was this morning. It was tonight in Tokyo, but this morning here. Anyway, she won the gold medal in the eight hundred, uh, broke the American record. Um, Trenton, born and bred, went to Trenton High School, nineteen years old, the first American woman to win the Olympic gold in the 800 since Madeline Manning in Mexico City in 1968 and broke uh, the, the national record, the American record held by uh, Ajay Wilson, who lives in, in Philly now, went to um, Temple, didn't run for them, but graduated from Temple. Um, so the first woman ever from New Jersey to win an Olympic track individual gold medal. And tonight, Sidney McLaughlin has a very good chance to become the second. So it'd be really interesting if no New Jersey woman had ever won a gold medal in track in an individual event could be two in one day. What's the event with the ball and the stick and they, they spin around and throw it. What's that called? I watched that this throw. morning. Hammer throw. That's, a, that's a hell of an event. I'll watch that every day if it's on. Well, one of the top guys in the country is from South Jersey. Um, Johnny Jackson from uh, Delcy high school. Did I ever throw that thing the wrong way. Um, yeah, it hits, it hits the cage. I mean, there's a very, there's a very, oh my God. I mean, yeah, there's a, but Johnny Jackson, I think was, he was like ninth in the Olympic trials uh, from, from uh, Delta. What's it Island. called? The hammer toss? The hammer throw. Yeah. Hammer throw. See, it, that should just be people throwing hammers. I'd watch that too. You probably would. I would. Absolutely. If people are throwing hammers. I'm in. Oh, I haven't, I have a new event. Yes. Be like, if somebody had a certain amount of time, what Olympic event would they yeah, have? Yeah, like a four-year span. Singles kayaking. That seems tough, though. If you have upper body strength. That's I mean, fun to watch, by the way. It's really fun to watch. I really enjoyed that. They had like a 200-meter singles kayak event. Yep. Which was They're getting awesome. after it. Yep. They did get Olympic. after it. The Olympics on Peacock. Yeah. Yeah. Do on I get CNBC. a company gold star for that? USA, CNBC uh yeah NBC. it's been fun to watch yeah all right if you enjoy the eagle eye podcast please rate and subscribe wherever you get your pods i met a guy at practice today he told me i did that because he told me to i appreciate that <laughs> please keep doing that it helps us if you're watching on youtube click the like button and subscribe there as well we'll be back with you later this week for some more training camp talk for Rubom dave we'll speak soon